Welcome to the SBP Podcast, Mobile Filmmaking. You're listening to episode 125, and I am super happy to be back with you. I'm Susie Botello, and I'm your host. <laughs> Guys, it's so good to be back. I missed you. I missed sharing with you, and um, I missed looking for you on social media after you've listened to episodes and things like that. So uh, not that I haven't been looking for you anyways. Um, However, the reason it's been a while since um, we last recorded episode 124 is because we held our international mobile film festival in San Diego on uh, on this past, not this very last weekend, but the, the one before that. It takes a little while to get things wrapped up after a film festival and uh, we're working on getting the online version of our film festival prepared and we'll have a date for you soon about that all right now let's talk about what happened here what did happen in our film festival well first of all i just want to announce that the winners have been announced and they are listed on our website in the awards page if you go to events you scroll down to about the middle, close to the end of the page, you'll see a link to open up the awards page where all the winners are listed. Also on our programming, uh, if you actually go to the notes on our, you know, this episode of the podcast, you'll actually see links to all that. So I just want to make sure that you have access to the announcement which announced all the winners of the International Mobile Film Festival in San Diego. Um, Listen, I have a lot of shout outs to give, but because this is a podcast and I know you didn't come here for a bunch of shout outs, um, I just want to generally say that I, I personally, as the founder of the film festival, want to thank everyone who supported us from people who bought tickets to attending the sponsors, our ambassadors, the people that who came out to help set up and and uh, straight the set, you know, wrap things up at the location. It was a beautiful event. Everyone said it was a blast, like literally said blast. So I'm going to go with that too because it was a blast. I can't think of a better word. We all felt elevated by the end of the festival, for sure, and by the end of each day. <laughs> um, so let's let's talk a little bit about, about our two guests in this episode. They flew in from the UK. Their names, and, and they have been in our podcast before. Uh, their names are James Smith and Caroline Spence. They are filmmakers, and they generally make only feature-length films. And they've made quite a number of them. However, mobile films, films shot with smartphone cameras, uh, they've made two. And this one is called Surveilled. This one being the one that they submitted to the festival, which was selected. And it literally kicked off the festival as the first film to be uh, introduced to the attendees and filmmakers who uh, came. And uh, Surveilled was a, was a full feature length film. It had a very good reception during the festival and it won the runner up prize uh, as well. So it came in as a great contender tailing right behind the best film uh, feature film winner, One Punch by Darcy Yule, who is in Australia. But, you know, let's go and let's go ahead now, literally, and talk to James and Caroline and ask them to share their experience uh, in the mobile filmmaking community so far. And also some some tips for all of you as well. Um, So if you are ready to be inspired, ready to listen to a few little stories about what happened in our film festival Uh, from some of the filmmakers and ready for a little entertainment let's talk to James and Caroline hey welcome 
Welcome back to the SBP Podcast Mobile Filmmaking. It's been forever, it seems like. But you know what? We were really busy with our International Mobile Film Festival in San Diego. So I thought on this first episode back, uh, we'd bring you back to one of our uh, previous episodes. But we're going to do it from San Diego. Uh, our guests for this episode are Caroline Spence and James Smith. They are both here in San Diego, sitting right in front of me right now. And uh, they enjoyed our film festival. They won the runner-up award for best feature film with their film Surveilled. And I just want to give them a big shout out. Hey! Woohoo! <laughs> Yay, us! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Caroline, uh, I know you flew a few thousand miles, right? Oh, it was just a short hop across the pond. It only took ten and a half hours. Yeah. At least that, that was fine. That was fine. It was a nice, comfortable flight, actually. And we had for the very first time uh, Ryan Reynolds' Aviation Gin, which I've absolutely fallen in love with. So, Ryan, if you want to send me a caseload, I'll be very happy. I'll get you my address later we'll on. We'll have to give Ryan Reynolds a, <laughs> a shout out. <laughs> uh, what about you, James? Yeah, I mean, I, I enjoyed the uh, what was it? It was a, aviation gym. Aviation gym, no, <laughs> aviation gym was great, um, but San Diego is fantastic, really great place. I was surprised how big the place is and uh, beaches. Uh, so much action here, you know, beaches, restaurants, hotels, and, of course, the film festival was really good. So, yeah, I think um, usually you find something wrong with a place, but I'm, I've yet <laughs> to find much wrong with this place. It'd be, the only thing that would be difficult to go back. Yeah, it's going to be very hard to go back to the UK now. Um, but, you know, we'll, we, I've decided I want to come live here, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to come back. Awesome. I'm going to come back. Well, there's loads more to explore, so um, we've only explored a tiny little portion of it around the Mission Bay area. But um, And today we went to visit um, the Hotel del Coronado, where um, our favourite film of all time, Some Like, like It Hot, was shot. So um, very excited to have uh, seen it for real. And the beach again. <laughs> um, well, let's talk a little bit just uh, up front. Let's talk a little bit about your feature film, Surveilled, uh, and how it got into the film festival. Uh, you paid the founder $100,000 to get in. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, but it was a great film. It, had a, a, it was very well accepted. And uh, and yeah, you won an award, so congratulations, you guys! Woohoo! Yeah, we're still in the festival mode with all the all woohoos yeah. and claps. And <laughs> <laughs> it was fun, wasn't it? Yeah, we um actually we weren't actually going to do anything with this film because we didn't we weren't sure because as filmmakers, you know, we find ourselves too close to our films. We don't know if they're any good or or not, and we thought, oh well, we'll um. You know, we, we we hadn't really decided exactly how we were going to release it, but um, then up popped this, you know, Susie's, Susie, your uh, film festival um, entry entries opened, and we thought, oh, let's do this to support Susie's film festival. We won't get accepted, but, you know, let's just do it. And um, apparently we're the first entry of the fe feature film category. Yes. Yes. So that was pretty cool. And then... Um, and then it was a big question of, oh, we're not going to get accepted in, but it doesn't matter. Um, we'll, we'll still like to go to San Diego one day, but maybe if we don't get accepted, we won't this time, but we'll see. But then we got accepted in and it was, um, wow, what a great feeling that was. It was really cool. Our first festival entry, well, we'd been um, accepted into the South End Film Festival um, in the UK, but this was, um, this was a great, it was great fun. Uh, great it was very celebratory it was yeah yeah so we started being very excited and thinking okay let's start let's shall we go to america <laughs> <laughs> how was your how was your experience um throughout the process of the uh listen guys these guys are honest with us because they know me well enough now they know they can say almost anything <laughs> uh how was your experience as a filmmaker though? throughout the process 
Um, this, well, surveilled, what, from the very beginning of the, the making the film? Well, from the beginning of time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, let's go back. When I was born. Um, no, that uh, your hard. process from submitting it uh, to... Yeah, I mean, I think, um, as Caroline says, it was um, we were in two minds ex exactly what to do with this film. You know, it was made uh, through a lot of enthusiasm by um, local non-professional actors and some professional actors coming on board. And so it was a big mix of um, ideas and people. And so we didn't really know quite what to do with it in the end, as Caroline said. But um, I think it kind of nicely rounded itself off with... Um, the International Mobile Film Festival in San Diego because um, it's kind of a nice way to say, okay, well, we've done our best to market it, put it out there, you know, being a smartphone shot film on very little money and then coming to a sunny, lovely place like this and a great festival. I think it's, it's really worked out well. And I think in the context of the other films that were involved, I'm quite happy that the competition was good and tough because I, I watched them all, um, you know, uh, I think one of them I just watched a little bit because we were pretty tired at one point, so we, we had to go and get something to eat. But it's very important to come and watch other films, and, and it's important to attend. Yeah. You know, and so many people make films and they don't promote them and they don't attend the events. Now, so on this particular case, a lot of the other filmmakers have very good reasons why they couldn't fly into San Diego yeah. from, from, you know. But if you can, um, you know, you should attend them. That's what we thought. We'd better go and have a look. And we've learned a lot here. But the competition was very good, very diverse, I have to say. I think the selections were across the board. Um, and also I thought it, I thought the f short film side of it was very, very good indeed. And I thought, you know, full credit to you, Susie, for the selection. Oh, I was going to say I didn't film any of those. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought the selections were really good and I, I, I was very impressed because I have seen a lot of films before, short films, sometimes in other festivals that haven't been, you know, don't leave you with a great feeling. But I think what we did was you, you bunched them all together in the screening and it was you could then compare them like for like against the other ones. I thought it was really interesting. Some of them were great and I'm, you know, I'm a bit picky, to be honest, because I get bored yeah. easily. But they were they were really yeah. good. After, so the whole after thing eleven years of curating the the short films for the film festival, uh, for me it's more like and and the juxtaposition of one towards the other. You know, thinking about you know they just got done watching this dance video. Now let's bring him back over here to this. You know, because I I think about that how they're going to perceive them. You know. After they just watched a serious one, let's have a little happy, <laughs> you know, sort of things like that. Uh, it comes from my B-roll, uh, you know, my B-roll background. <laughs> um, the short film experience was 25 short films, very short films. I mean, some, a few of them were one minute long and then the other ones were five minutes. So having everyone sit through that at first sounds like a lot. But just because of the way it played, it, it went well. So, and that's how I like to do them every year, quite honestly. That would have been really tough last year with 50, though. 50 short films. Yeah, I think the, the time, to be honest, the time went by quite quickly because, the, as you know, as the films were, weren't too long, you know, between one and five minutes each, and, you know, we were able... And it kept you... Yeah, it kept you engaged. Yeah, it kept you engaged, and um, I just really enjoyed them. Um, I'm. I think the winning film was the Private Life of Bees in the short. Yeah, the Secret Life of Bees. The The Secret Life of Bees. I absolutely loved that. Yeah. I learned a lot about bees, and I thought, you know, I'm a bit of a wildlife nut, and uh, but I learned a lot about bees. That's beautifully shot. Yeah, in the audience, uh, I heard the the, the remarks from it. Oh, the one about the bees, the the Secret Life of Bees, the documentary one, and all these things, and me in my head knowing that it had won. Um, that was that was a good feeling because it it you want to it's it's nearly impossible because films are so subjective right but you almost want to make sure that the audience is satisfied with the the films that won you know as well so and um although she couldn't come over uh give give her a shout out in the intro uh later to Mirabai for that film um when when you were uh at the festival, um, 
the pacing of the festival, how did that go? Um, go on, James. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I think it was uh, some of the busiest uh, days we've had. <laughs> I mean, we, we've been to the Cannes Film Festival, for example, a number of times, um, and we've been busy there, and South End in, in Essex, and we, and we were sort of running around and arriving, getting to a hotel, going to see a film, having a drink and something to eat. And, but this one was pretty fierce. I'd say the pace was um, was pretty fierce, and we, we were... Uh, very tired after it but in a good way you know i think we we ended the the festival with a big smile on our face and um it was great fun uh you know and i think we we do i i do as i said i do get bored easily you know because you you know there's a lot of material and content and things out there but so when you come to something like this you do kind of need to be entertained and i think it was great uh, what do you think, Caroline? Mm, yeah, I think, um, you know, there were a lot of films being shown through the day, but there were a lot of breaks as well um, where <laughs> everybody scurried off either to a bar or to <laughs> to get get a sandwich or something and um, then scurried back for the next, the next screening. So, um, and of course, all the networking in between. Um, that was that was really great fun. We didn't want to miss out on any of that, hence why it was... An intense couple of days because um, we met some great people, had some great laughs, and I hope we made some good new friends now. Um, we hope to see them again one day. Yeah, I think the part the part of the, uh, you know, the breaks. Um, I was talking to Erin Nabu's our ambassador, and I said, you notice, after major parts of the festival itself, I tend to uh, want to, you know, ensure that uh, people take the breaks so that they can actually. Had that that be the the conversation starter but wow that workshop that was fantastic you know to have something like that um there's so much thought that goes into all the details of this uh but in the end there are things that happen spontaneously which are fantastic i was i was sort of getting, glancing around the room and watching the groups of filmmakers you know talking and meeting you know each other and you could see the connections and the relationships forming there. It's so fantastic. And the smiles, you know. So um, so let's talk a little bit, if you don't mind. Um, and this is going to be a short episode. I just, I just want to make sure I get your, your input on all this. But because you, I mean, this is the second film that you shot on a phone, the second feature films, because you guys are all about feature films, you know, not short films. Uh, this is the second one. And um, did, did you get inspired? I know you make regular professional, you know, uh, what do you call that? Uh, a traditional film. And so uh, what about uh, mobile film? Because we are, mobile filmmakers are professional. You know, these are professional films. Um, are you guys, uh, did you guys, um, you know, get inspired maybe to... Or persuaded in any, in any way to make another uh, feature film with a smartphone? Um, yeah, I, th I think um, we had the this discussion in the seminar, didn't we? Whereby um, it was kind of um, at, you know, there's so many cameras and formats that you can shoot on, and I, I think um, smartphone filmmaking, you know, it's a wonderful format. But I think you need to make something specific to that, you know, that uses the best advantages of of the phones which is really its lightweight capabilities and filming discreetly in certain locations so i think we are, yeah following this festival i'm invigorated to have another go um yeah probably a feature film because we're silly like that and um <laughs> you know we we like a challenge but i i don't know i think there were a lot of people there um very enthusiastic and they knew more about the the, the technology which has moved on since the veil because that was shot three years ago so I'm going to have another look at it and um, Caroline will tell me what I'm going to be doing, I expect. <laughs> yeah, I'm very keen to shoot another one on a smartphone. I think I keep, I keep trying to <laughs> persuade James to, uh, you know, look into it a bit more. And, um, yeah, I mean, we, we got the camera. We may as well, you know, while, you know, while, we've got the, while we can, we'll, um, we'll go and do something. Just got to get the right story. How, how many films, how much time do you give yourself? between one the completion of one of your feature films until the next one 
Well, in the case of Surveil, not much time. In fact, we were running <laughs> we were running the post production for Cyberlanto, which is the first one, and Surveil um, in uh, parallel, and that wasn't much fun at all. I think that was um, it's in the cr- lockdown. Yeah, during the lockdown, and I think so. We were there was no gap really, and I think that was a big mistake. Um, having said that, uh, one has to learn in any any you know n- none of these things are easy. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think in future we'll probably <laughs> probably give ourselves a little bit of a gap between them. But I, having said that, you've got to keep going. As soon as you wrap one film, I've heard this from you know big filmmakers. Keep the momentum. You need to keep the momentum yeah. because all that happens is you create a delay that will uh, that will get bigger later on. Yeah, people fall off. Um, you know, of the the wavelength of listening and and getting excited about all the projects that you guys are working on. You have two right now that you're working on to finish up, right? Or is it just one? Uh, We're we're finishing Casting Kill, which is a a, we're shot in London. And uh, so that's in post-production, just coming to the end now. And then we're developing um, pre-production for another film, which is going to be shot in Essex, just outside London, hopefully later this year. Mm. Uh, neither of those are smartphone films and then uh, so we've already following this festival you know gonna load ourselves up with some more exciting projects probably a smartphone film <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome what would uh what would you want to say to uh listeners uh who are listening to this filmmakers whatever uh and you know about uh making sure that they submit to by the way, uh, June nineteenth is the opening date for the next submission period for the film festival, uh, and so that's coming up around the corner. And we've made a few changes on that. So if if you guys are interested in that, uh, go follow us on all our social media, or just go to our website. We'll start putting things there. Um, but what would you guys say to listeners about submitting films to our film festival and, and being engaged with it and if they can somehow making sure that they're here next year? Well, if, if entries are opening in June, I'd say get your skates on if you haven't already got a smartphone film done. <laughs> <laughs> and that's one of the joys of working with phones, isn't it? Because you can, um, you can work quicker. Yeah, you're freer, you can work quicker. You know, we were talking to some of the guys about doing a, a 24 or 48 hour film challenge. You know, um, okay, give yourself a little bit more time, but, but you know, you can go out and shoot a film pretty quickly. So as long as you've got the story. So yeah, get your skates on if you want to um, submit to this festival. And then if you get accepted, I would say, try everything in your power to get here because it really was such fun. It's such a beautiful location. And the food is amazing and um, you meet some fantastic people and, yeah, have a whole lot of fun. Yeah, and you can use your vacation <coughs> and attendance at the film festival as your uh, business expenses, but in your heart you also know it's your vacation. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I think we uh, met a lot of people that were coming from all over America and... Um, well, in case of Surveilled, uh, we had our actors coming from New York and um, indirectly from Australia as well. So, you know, I think um, if you're in America, and you know, just try and get here. And, and even if you're abroad, you know, it's definitely worth it. And um, it makes a big difference because if you're, if you're appearing, you can get all the social media stuff. You, it's great networking and you can get all of those photographs and put them on your, on your website to promote the fil- your film. Even if you don't win, even if you know you're just um, you know having a go, um, it makes a big difference because a lot of people don't promote their films properly. And in the competition, uh, you know the the market is crowded. Let's face it, with films, but um, it gives people something else to look at um, other than just your poster, and they they can see that there's real people behind this film. I mean, you know, in Britain, people tend, you know, it's a criticism sometimes of people in Britain that they just they don't move around the country or, or abroad to support what they're doing. They should do. Uh, in America, I think people definitely are prepared to move long distances from what I've seen. <laughs> so, you know, that's a, that's a plus for, for people in America. But, um, you know, I think with Surveilled, we proved with these actors coming to 
to Britain from Australia and other parts of the world and now to America that you it, it's great you can you can come to San Diego and you should enter this competition you will not regret it <laughs> yeah we had a in 2019 which I keep thinking it was last year you guys because it was like so long ago but it was the last film festival we had in person you know uh where we did have um you know CK Golding who came from uh Sheffield in in the UK um we also had let me see Matteo Tibiletti uh who came out from uh Italy we had um we had people from Australia as well you know and we had we've had people from different places all in one film festival like this but then covid hit and it's like i was surprised that you guys were willing to you know come out from the uk quite honestly and then i was surprised you know people like niles coming out from massachusetts you know we had a uh, you know ryan mcdonald and brandy also that came out from utah i mean i was really quite surprised considering it was our first you know coming back to in person which was also fun um i was giddy <laughs> throughout the entire event <laughs> well there's no way i wanted to miss the opportunity to come out and um you know i think i think one of the problems with people coming into america from outside at the moment is the fact that you still have to have a covid test before you come into before you'll be let on the plane mm -hmm. so if we had we had to have a covid test the day before we we got on the plane and it, we were on pins and needles for like 40 50 minutes waiting to see if we were clear you know, when you hear about people who don't have symptoms but still test positive. So we're a bit nervous about that. And I think um, that might be a, a deciding factor in whether people can come in to yeah. the States from... I mean, traveling is never 100% comfortable, a comfortable experience anyway. I mean, there's, you know, oh, I love, you know, hanging out at airports, you know. Some people do, you know. But um, the whole experience itself, it's like a little... A little bit, you know, especially when you're coming going long distance like that as well. But yeah, I could totally see where the, you know, but just wait till 2023 though. It's going to be awesome. And, Hope, and, uh, hopefully they won't. They'll have dropped the COVID testing by then. Oh my gosh, <laughs> right? Um, James, Caroline, any last words? Um, no, it's just been a fantastic uh, experience and. Uh, it's one of those trips where you you think you before you get on the plane to go back you're thinking when can I come back out again you know it's that's a, that's almost like a holiday isn't it really so no it's been absolutely fantastic and well done to you for creating this in the first place and continuing on after the pandemic well done to you Susie <laughs> yeah I just want to say thank you so much for the opportunity for making us feel so welcome and um, well, thank you also to Aaron, your, your fantastic team, Aaron, who, who we love, and Neil, who is hilariously funny. What a laugh he's got. <laughs> you know, oh, brilliant. You guys are brilliant and uh, can't wait for next year. Awesome. All right, everybody, you heard it here. They're coming back next year to the palm trees.